everybody, I'm Boobs Kelly. Welcome back to another video. Let's take a look at more fabulous fashion from Cannes. If you missed part one on Cannes, I will link it for you here and in the description box in case that doesn't work for you. Let's kick it off with this beautiful dress on Selena Gomez. This red color is absolutely fabulous. It looks like it's maybe a little bit loose in the waistline here, but I'm not mad at it. It's off the shoulder construction is going to make it a little bit difficult to get a perfect fit because the roses along that neckline are going to be heavier and weighing it down. So I think that's what's contributing to that little bit of bunching we see under the bust line. But in general, this looks so nice. The length of it is perfect for her. It's so beautiful. She always looks glamorous and red. The shoes are a perfect to match. I love it. I also love the sort of old glamour hairstyle that she chose rather than something more severe. This just accentuates the softness and echoes the flowers. It's beautiful. I love it. This look on Coleman Domingo is probably one of his best, one of my favorites on him at least. I really like it. It's just polished. It's nice. It still has a very stylish edge to it that he is always gravitating towards. So I think it's still fresh enough for him and his aesthetic that it doesn't feel off base for him. It's just perfect. It's not too loud. It's nice and classy for Can. Now we already discussed Heidi Klum's red dress, but this pink shower loofah look is not working for me. I do not like this at all. It literally looks like an unraveled shower loofah. Just, it's not great. I could totally see this working for something really editorial, like a photo shoot, something you might see in a magazine, but it just doesn't suit the red carpet, like at all. This, I'm not sure who this is, it might be Lueve because Greta Lee wore a similar one to the Met Gala. I don't like this. It looks messy. It's a sheer dress, we're over it, and it's just a messy version of that. Not into it. Bella Hadid's black dress, however, is perfection. It's classy, it's simple, it's beautiful, it still has lots of interest from the texture. It's gorgeous. It's flattering to her. No complaints. This is what you expect from Can. What you don't expect is tantrums like this. I personally am totally on this security guard's side without looking too deeply into this. People are far too obsessed with their glamour shots and getting selfies. And if Can or any other red carpet lets every single celebrity stop to get their glamour shot on the stairs or whatever, the red carpet would take six hours for people to arrive and get through. It just would not be an acceptable thing. They have very strict rules and they are sent to the invitees plenty in advance. And typically it says no stopping on the stairs. So this lady was just doing her job and she caught a lot of grief online from fans of the celebrities who got beef. And I mean, I get it. At first, glance, she does seem like she's being really aggressive. At the same time, it's the rules. And in an attempt to ground people just a little bit more in the moment and not being so concerned with being on camera and getting the perfect shot and getting selfies, I fully support this sort of a policy. Move along, no stopping on the stairs. You know, you get your pictures at the bottom and you go. I don't, I don't see any problems with it but leave your opinion in the comments. I love this yellow lime, almost chartreuse color on Viola Davis. This is so beautiful. I think it's a tad bit shoulder heavy, but it's really balanced out nicely with the cape and the flowiness of the fabric. It adds back a little bit more softness. It's nice and fitted across her waistline, so it doesn't swallow her up. I think overall, this is really, really beautiful. And I also like her hairstyle choice for this. By not having too severe of a hairstyle, it doesn't make the shoulders stand out too much. It created a nice flow that added balance to the overall look. I really like Chris Hemsworth blush pink suit. I'm not in love with this ivory open stitch look on Elle Fanning. I love the back of it. I think the back is striking and spectacular and beautiful, but the front I just do not like. It's wide, deep, deep v-neck here is not as flattering as it could have been. While I love this color on Joey King and I like the general silhouette and idea of this dress, I don't love the sheer elements of it. I'm just not 
a fan of these sheer skirts and the overly sheer elements anymore. I think that they have begun to look really outdated and they have begun to take away from the actual garments themselves. Instead, you're looking at her belly button, you're looking at her legs, you're looking at her body. You're not looking at the dress and you're not looking at her overall look together as a cohesive style moment or fashion moment. You're drawn to body parts. And I just think that sort of defeats and takes away from the purpose of wearing something magnificent, a magnificent, beautiful design that's bespoke or couture. You're, you're taking away from that valuable fashion moment by turning the attention to just the body by having it be sheer. I don't like that part of it, but I do like the Cinderella blue. Kelly Rowland's green bralette top and skirt, I think are just okay. I really think this would have been better suited at a different venue rather than it can. I'm just not seeing this as sort of elevated enough for this particular venue, but in general, she looks amazing. She looks beautiful, but I just don't think that it's quite on level. Also, the bralette top looks like it's squash in the boob and it looks like it's not quite big enough. So it's giving the impression that it's too small, which is never going to be a good look. It's always going to be distracting to the eye. I think that this white sculptural look was much more beautiful, made much more profound of a statement and was much more flattering. Paris Jackson's look, again, I don't think suited the venue enough and it looks a lot more costumey with just how short the garment is in the front. It's too short in the front. It's equivalent to a bodysuit with a train. It's not so much dress status here because it's too short. In a different venue, I would say the gloves look like they're maybe just a tad too big, would have benefited from a better fit, and an updo would have served the overall look so much more. It would have made much more of a statement having an updo for this look, but regardless, not at can. Bella Thorne's sort of lava orange dress here I think is really nice. I think it's quite pretty. I like her styling for it. She also could have gotten away with a sleek updo. That would have been really nice as well, especially with those large earrings. But I think that the styling, the dress, everything is going together pretty nicely here. On my monitor, at least, it looks fully lined. If it is just a bodysuit and we've got the whole granny panty situation, then I don't like it. But on my monitor, it looks like it's actually lined and it just looks so much more beautiful. Fabulous. Coco Rocha went for a complete look. This is really rather costumey. This very sculptural piece is beautiful, beautiful construction here and her makeup was perfect for it, just echoing that little pop of green that you can see throughout the front of the garment. And she successfully ended up not competing with the garment at all, despite having full-blown hair, makeup, jewelry, everything on point, really cohesive. Eva Longoria and Dixie's additional looks I thought were pretty successful. They maybe could have been just a tad bit more elevated for Can, but they weren't the worst that we saw. I'm not loving Joe Alwyn's suit. Something about the lapel is just sort of droopy. It's drawing the eye really low and creating too low of a focal point around there. It's almost like widening his midsection, his torso a bit. Overall, I think just the cut of this particular suit was not as flattering for him as it should have been. Mitchell's sculptural breastplate is extremely artistic. This is something that you might find in a museum. I think it's a very striking, against the black gown. And I love the construction of the gown. Elsa Hosk also opted for something very dramatic and sculptural, and I quite like this one. I think it's very successful. I like the opera gloves and the choice of accessories for this. The earrings are perfect. The hairstyle is perfect. If she had gone for any other hairstyle, it would have been a disaster. This was just the right choice. I think overall, this was a big statement that was successful. The only complaint I have for this is just how wrinkly it is up the seams of the skirt in particular. It's really taking away from the impact. Once you notice it, you can't unsee it. It doesn't look intentional enough to be like rouging on purpose. It looks like a mistake, like the puckering of the fabric, which is very unfortunate for such a beautiful attempt.
Andy McDowell opted for a big pop of color in a really ethereal and beautiful silhouette. This is something really classy, really flattering to her. I think it's a very sophisticated option and looked really, really nice. I would have loved to see something beautiful added to that updo, like a gorgeous pin, something sparkly with some crystals, just to brighten up the look a tad because it doesn't have a room for a necklace maybe even some big earrings would be fun or a cool cocktail ring just maybe a little something to add a pop to push it over the edge her other look was a little bit less flattering it's looking a little bit droopy and frumpy around the arms and the sides here just due to its general construction but she looks beautiful regardless well, I love this color for Helen Mirren, and I think the dress itself had excellent potential. I really think the hairstyle let her down. It really sort of dragged down her overall appearance here. It wasn't very flattering for her in general. I think just a classic full updo or something a little bit more blown out and bouncy to really show the volume that she can get out of her hair would have been really, really nice. Something we're more used to seeing. This sort of slicked down flat, hairstyle just didn't do her beauty justice. The dress itself, like I said, had great potential. It could have been really, really awesome. It looks maybe just a tad bit overwhelming, a tad bit heavy, this amount of fabric on her, but I would have given it a pass if the hairstyle had been different. I really like Leomi Anderson's dress here. I think this is absolutely fabulous. I really enjoy the sculptural element of this. I like the construction of this, the contrast with the lower portion of the skirt and this peplum. It's not a completely naked skirt. It, it comes down low enough that it doesn't give the impression that it's too short. It looks really great. She's pulling it off amazingly. Her hair, makeup, and jewelry are perfect for it. Her shoes are perfect. This was awesome. This barely there ice blue dress with the giant shower loofah opera coat is just not a success for me. This whole thing reads really, really messy. I'm not loving it. Candace Swainpool's patterned dress is quite the statement. It really accentuates her figure with the directions of the diagonal lines, though the pattern itself gives the impression that it's just kind of mismatched and not sewn together properly. So I'm sure some of you seamstresses or sewers are driven crazy by the fact that it looks like they didn't line up the pattern properly across the seams. But I think that that has at least some degree to do with just the general fit that it's bunched up just a tad here and there. Overall, I think she looks great. It's not my favorite dress though. Ann Kruger's look is okay. I think the color is pretty. I can't decide if it's washing her out just a tad. I'm not liking this hairstyle for her at all. She really needed a different hairstyle for this. She could have gone for old Hollywood glamour down the way Selena Gomez did. That would have worked for this. Generally speaking, this halter top construction is not something I tend to love. I think that it can look a little too casual in a setting like can. It could have been elevated with the right jewelry and the right hairstyle. This just ended up looking unflattering in my opinion. Don't love it. Mona Patel had an attempt at an ethereal, beautiful, bright pink dress, but it is that totally sheer sort of naked dress vibe, the granny panty sort of a vibe almost. It looks like it might be rather lined more like a mini skirt. I still don't love it. Rami's sparkly, crystally dress, I think has great potential, but it looks like it's falling down and you can definitely see a granny panty under there. So for those two reasons, it's definitely not hitting any best dress lists where, as far as I'm concerned, this one is just okay. Similar problem with Rochelle Humes. This one looked way too boxy and bulky to where it's widening her across the midsection and whatnot. And then the sheer skirt is not as flattering either. I think it has potential. If it fit her just a tad bit better, the proportions were just a tad different. I think she could have gotten away with it, but as it is here, it's not flattering her figure at all. Kylie Verzosa's dress is spectacular. This is something I love. I'm obsessed with it. This is one of the most beautiful dresses I saw at Cannes. I absolutely love it. It's my favorite color yellow. It's absolutely beautiful. And one of my favorite things to see, which is floral patterns. This is gorgeous. And it's styled really nicely. It's flattering to her figure. It fits her really nicely. It doesn't look like it's falling down completely in part because it's got a nice straight across neckline construction here. Overall, this is one of my absolute favorites. Love it.
Elsa's dress I think would have been much more spectacular without the big gold chunk thing on her shoulder. It's just not tied in anywhere else in the garment. If it had a gold detailing across the belted area or something of that nature, or you could see a peekaboo of gold shoes, something like that, it would have tied it all in together. The way it is here, it just looks a little disjointed. It's not incorporated enough. I would have liked it better without the big gold blob. Renata looks super classy, super polished, super beautiful and gorgeous here. Could have stood to have like a bigger earring or maybe a choker if she wanted. The fit of this looks spectacular. The diagonal lines and sculptural element around the hip add a little bit of visual weight to her hip, which helps to balance her broader shoulders. She has wider shoulder line as compared to her hips, so she really benefits from something that can add a little bit of visual weight to the hip and without adding volume in the skirt and having like a big flowy skirt, he was able to achieve that via those diagonal lines, the fabric gathering and that sculptural element created that balance. The diagonal line across the asymmetrical neckline also helps to take away from that dominant shoulder line. So this was a great balanced look for her that really benefited her figure nicely. Natasha Poli made a very dramatic metallic statement I'm not loving this. The belt just looks too artificial, too out of place, and is controlling the entire look. You can't really take in and appreciate the rest of the look here because this belt is so overly dominant. Now this was just a few of the looks from Can. If you would like another video covering the rest of the looks that we haven't gotten to yet, please leave it in the comments and let me know what you thought of the whole security guard barging people off of the steps. Thank you so much for joining me for today's video. I hope you have a happy day ahead and a happy weekend. I'll see you next time. Bye.